All right, let's Kevin. Can we please right. do yes. this? Can you hear that dog barking? There is no dog. You every time you said that there hasn't been a dog. <laughs> There's not a dog in your house. It's a bit, and we're all tired. Yeah. Of it. Are you talking no about your dog. feet from walking around all <laughs> These day? These dogs yeah. are These tired. These dogs are tired. Welcome to the International News Service. I'm Kevin. We do that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just listening to the dog bark the whole time now. There's no dog. There's no dog. Let's just stop it. His dog is as fake <laughs> as that noise Brian hears all the time. That's asshole. That is not fake. That is gone. That's real. Okay. Well, they're both ghosts. We're going to do some ghost busting, but, can, but okay. first, I think we all know people are relying on us to report the yeah. news. Welcome to the International News Service with your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison and... And I'm Mike Weeby. Well, I'm Brian Camp. And running the boards is Mark Ryan. Mark Ryan. Mark Ryan on the boards. <laughs> with Tacey Scott on weather and Jefferson Jorferson on sports. Jefferson Jorferson. <laughs> He's the next. He's the next uh, linebacker that he's kind of head damaged, but it, we, you know, he, but he's beloved. He's beloved in our local international news community. So we kind of <laughs> let him. We kind of let him do his thing, and you know, we always get a. He wears like a funny plaid blazer, and we do a little bit with him sometimes. And when we have like a lighthearted uh, human interest piece, we we kind of we kind of recap it with him afterwards and he, we have a lot of fun with him well that's just a little bit of inside info at the ins offices we should probably little, get to little the behind the, the curtain with what's yeah. going on here at ins welcome to ins the international news service your source for the most important weird news from across the globe with news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Weeby, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. All right, well, our first story comes to us from WFAA Channel 8 in Dallas, Texas. Hell yes! <laughs> Dallas, Texas, all right. Hell Yes, talking about Dale Hansen coming <laughs> yep. on WFAA for for worldwide listeners because we are the international news service. Mm -hmm. uh, WFAA in Dallas has a newscaster named Dale Hansen who is a real cool, likable Texas gentleman and uh, who uh, everyone's parents respected and liked. And then in the last like ten years, he's become. <laughs> really fucking cool and and like liberal about stuff <laughs> and it is the most conflicting thing in yes. the world to a conservative to, to conservatives that grew up in texas it That's is uh man i i the anarchy the quiet anarchy that dale <laughs> hansen has caused the dfw is i i i can it tastes it tastes like whipped cream to mike <laughs> But but Michael, that's that's the man who talked to us about football. Yep, it's the football man. Yeah, it he was be, the football man can't be saying those things. He uh, he came and did a talk at I think like uh, the high school or something, and my mom went, and uh, my mom knew everything about cocaine <laughs> afterwards. She <laughs> knew what night the kids were partying, what drugs they were using. She told me it is not just for the poor it's the rich kids too did she get a serious look in your eye and sit you down and ask you point blank mike i'm gonna ask you this i want you to be very truthful with me are you on the cocaine right now did you get that question <laughs> she asked me multiple times that's right that was Lord. she finally had an explanation yeah. i was in, like i was in junior high and she like she saw him oh well, you some, were coked up all the time in junior high well to a rough junior high oh don't Bull, no, his did not go to a rough junior high. I actually, not, I did go to a rough junior high. There were two junior highs. Kevin, in, there were two junior highs in in Denton, Texas, um, mm -hmm. and the rough one was called 
Strickland Junior High, and then the rich kid, the posh rich kid, sort of the type of junior high where all the kids, their parents gave them cars and like nice cars, like BMWs <laughs> and Corvettes, even though they were only like 14 and 15, but they could get away with it because they were so rich and like right. they were, their families were in the pockets of the mayor of Denton, Texas, and they mm-hmm. would like drive by and they would just like spin out and like shoot mud on us when we were walking home because we had to walk home. That 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 junior high was called Calhoun, and I went to Strickland. What, what, what? I'm just trying to remember. You you grew up in Denton, Brian. What um, what what junior high did you go to? Well, I'll tell you, Mike. Uh, uh, I don't know just, that. Just, I, just, I, just I the name, just Denton. the name of the junior high. I, you know, fine. I, don't to, I don't. First of all, I don't have to buy without, you a without a whole rigmarole. It's a <laughs> simple it's question. Maybe, it's not a rigmarole. It's it is. There were a, two junior highs. There was Strickland and there was Calhoun. Which one did you go to? Look, I'm not going to speak without correcting the record on your mischaracterization of the Denton junior highs. Yeah. Uh, anyone who spent any time in Denton knows that Strickland was the rich kid junior high. It was a safe junior high. It's where you sent your kid if you wanted them never to have any trouble at all. Yeah, that's where the, high. of course, that's where the Phoenix Apartments, the uh, the toughest housing projects in Denton, they sent all their kids there. Also, all the rural, sketchy kids from. There you know, were there were ten murders at Calhoun Junior High. Ten in, in the time I was there. <laughs> ten, ten murders. Were they were they of fetal pigs? Were they for oh, fetal pigs what, for what, like a science class? But it was turned out that the murders were unnecessary and it was just rich kids doing like weirdo rich kid dissect. They they were still alive when they dissected it. I, now, I see. I think you're confusing. I think I understand where you're coming from now is that at Strickland, you had a lot of you had of like a lot of student activism and a lot of the kids because, you know, it's something that, that rich kids are able to do. They're able to get together after school. And I remember you guys were protesting the dissection of fetal kids, fetal, <laughs> fetal kids, fetal pigs. Uh, we did we protest we that. We weren't able to dissect. We got pictures, um, yeah. black and white uh, Xerox photos that were loaned to us from Strickland uh, <laughs> of other other kids performing dissections. That's what we were able to see. <laughs> That's so. weird because we didn't have a Xerox machine at uh, Strickland. Everything uh, had, you guys had something. Copies much copies had to be hand drawn <laughs> or handwritten. Yeah, yeah. Which no, is I mean, why, that's... which is why we were we, you know, you for were a poor school, artist. we were underdogs, but very... we won a lot of penmanship competitions. <laughs> that's right. Famous, like like most tough schools, you were famous for your penmanship. <laughs> well, yeah, it was. Well, that's why, because we had to hand copy everything, and we had a real stern teacher that walked around with a cricket bat and would slam it, <laughs> slam it on the desk if he looked were, like you were outing yourself as the the rich snobby school. A cricket bat? I didn't even know what cricket was. We had we had one coach with an aluminum T ball bat that was all dented up. And I thought that was our one piece of sporting equipment in the entire school. We all took turns with the with the T ball bat and they let us go out and hit a pole for ten minutes at a time. Well, it was it, pole, I say was it was it. a cricket bat, but I come to find out later cricket's a different thing. It was it was a it was a stick made out of hickory. <laughs> and it was like, This is my this is my cricket. He was trying to say hickory, but he was so <laughs> backwoods and just right. like crazy. This is my cricket my, my bat. My cricket bat. Yep. My cricket bat. <laughs> you gonna spill the word better. And he just slamming it on the desk. And But, you know, I'll say this. It taught me how to spell. Like, mm-hmm. it taught me how to spell. It taught me how to have good penmanship because you, I was you do have beautiful afraid writing. of, I was afraid for my life. From the moment I stepped foot on to, well, really just having to walk to that school because that was a bad part of town because everybody that went there was basically from a bad part of town. And I'd have to walk through worse parts of town to get there. And uh, it was just basically I lived in fear from Monday to Friday when I got home. I lived in complete and total fear. It it made me stronger, but it also, let's, let's not lie, I, I have a lot of scars a lot of from physical and mental scars yeah. and uh not not more than a lot were from the Calhoun kids trying to run me down in their Porsches and BMWs and uh I want them at a Ferrari I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. and that kid mm-hmm. was only in like the 7th grade too right right like he was like like 13 maybe well i mean 
clearly you've got kind of a deranged recall of your childhood. Well, which that's is what alarming. happens when you get beat every day and you have to fight <laughs> your way yeah. in and out. By your, by, have uh, you seen that movie, The Warriors? And Essentially, <laughs> that was that. It was right. me having to right. bop my way to school, mm-hmm. then I had to bop my way to each class, and then the bell rang, I had to bop my way to the next class. Just going from subway platform to subway <laughs> platform, right? Just trying to get a... Metaphorically, yeah. <laughs> and then I get, get home and I look at... Louisville borough to the Denton borough. <laughs> I'd look at... i get home and I'd, I'd walk up to my house, then I'd see... The old man smoking, looking off into the distance at his ruined life. And I think this is what I fought to get home to. You know, our, our news, our, our sports guy. Oh, Jefferson Jorperson. Yeah. He went to uh, Strickland. He went to Calhoun. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on. You know, whatever. I'm done with it. I'm done with this. Can we please tell, can we, Kevin, if you're not going to keep us on track, I don't know what we're doing. Okay. Here. Yeah. I don't know why we're here. So our first story, like I said, our first story comes to us from WFAA channel eight. Oh, WFA channel, channel eight. eight in Dallas, Dale Dale Hansen's channel. And the title is Texas department of public safety mistakenly sends out Amber alert for Chucky doll on the morning of January 29th. An Amber alert was emailed from the Texas alert system. The alert listed the alleged abductor as Chucky. Chucky is described as a 28-year-old with red auburn hair, blue eyes, stands 3 foot 1 inches, and weighs 16 pounds. Uh, He was last seen wearing blue denim overalls with a multicolored, striped, long sleeve shirt and wielding a kitchen knife. It turns out this Chucky was the doll from the Child's Play movies. The abducted child was listed as Glenn, who is 5 years old, weighs 6 pounds, and stands 2 feet 3 inches. Glenn has red auburn hair and blue eyes and uh, was wearing a blue shirt and black collar prior to his disappearance. Glenn was first introduced in the film Seed of Chucky and is Chucky's son. Subscribers were sent the Amber Alert three separate times. When asked for comment, the Texas Department of Public Safety said, This Amber Alert is the result of a test malfunction. We apologize for the confusion this may have caused and are diligently working to ensure this does not happen again. I'll say this about Amber Alerts. Um, You know, if it's a child that's being thrust in a precarious, dangerous situation, it's no real surprise that the child's name is Amber. I don't think it has. I don't think it's only for children named Amber. (laughs) What? Really? (laughs) Yeah. Chucky and Glenn are on here. There's no Amber in the story. Yeah, but that's why. But that's why I think what Mike thinks is that's why it was a mistake. I think Mike. I think what Mike's thinking right now is that there was a Chucky and Glenn issue, but because they weren't named Amber, they should have had a different uh, alert. That wasn't the mix-up, Mike. Yeah, they don't have a Chucky or Glenn alert. So when there's a silver alert, is that usually about Anderson Cooper? Because he's a silver fox. He, he is. He is a handsome, silver-haired man. But no, silver alerts are about. Um, Old older people who might be suffering from dementia. Does Anderson Cooper have that? Oh yeah, he does for sure. To be to be that liberal, you'd have to have dementia, right, Mike? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a disease. <laughs> so, does anyone think Chucky weighs sixteen pounds? Because seems Chucky, as I recall, is a child's doll, and that is really heavy for a I kid. Agree. Yeah, that seems pretty heavy for sixteen a... pounds is a lot. Yeah, but it's probably after the. Uh... You know, I probably, I imagine that the Chucky doll probably weighed very, was very light. But then when it was imbued with the voodoo ritual by the serial killer, whose name I forget, and his essence was put into the Chucky doll, I imagine the soul of a serial murderer, you know, adds some weight. So you think, you think Chucky then stands for the proposition that a soul has mass and can be quantified with a scale. Yeah, there's a movie about that. It's called 21 Grams or something. <laughs> 20. But maybe it's more. I don't know. I don't know how many I don't know how much weight a soul how much has. Does a, does a serial killer's soul weigh more or less than I don't know. I think it would weigh more because soul. he had taken so many souls as a serial killer. Yeah, that's oh, true. Oh, you think you you think you collect the yeah, souls? Yeah, it's like Highlander, right? Okay. I don't know what the weight of a soul is but i wrote a poem about it and i'd like to read it to you guys right now okay oh uh, well, I'd, yeah. I'd like to hear this here's uh, so I, I just pulled out my mole skin i'm gonna read this how much does a soul weigh by mike weeby how much does a soul weigh a little bit or a lot how much does a soul weigh how long does it take blood to clot this is- a soul is something important 
we can all agree a soul is something that doesn't cost money. Nay, it is free. But a soul is worth something while it is free. It is worth more than just you or just me. Soul is something that is needed in a society. A soul is something that will set you free. Ron Paul, 2022. <laughs> That's, uh, I wrote that, so it's weird that it came up. So, it's, I think it's great that you had your ribbon that keeps your place in your moleskin yeah. set right to that poem. Yeah. Well, I mean, thank you, for, I, thank you for sharing it. I like I've written stuff since then, but it's just been powerful. So sometimes uh, when I get up uh, and I have my, I do a little thing called my my morning quiet. I call it, and I, hey, I'm in my morning quiet. And um, do you announce it? Yeah, because sometimes <laughs> my just, wife is there or like a bell? Will be, oh, yeah. We'll be trying to come in and go, like, you want some <laughs> eggs or whatever she says. And I go, I have my fucking morning quiet. God right. damn it. It sounds very restful. I need sounds... my devotional. Hmm? And I just do a little meditation. And lately, I've been, I've just been going to that passage and I read it and I think about it. I got a coffee and it's, it's got, the the you can see the steam going out i'm sitting up on the uh third floor of my st studio apartment and i just kind of look out on look out over the city and i think about yeah. all those people out there that are just they're just like little little busy ants and where's my place in all, all that do you do you have any poetry that refers to the people as little bitty ants is, is yeah oh let me you, find you, that you actually that hold on let me <laughs> find that I, mean, I thought that was really I thought that was beautiful so I'd like to hear it. This is called The Colony by Mike Weeby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See them scurry in and out out and in carrying their giant pieces of sand <laughs> but it is not sand for they are man. It is packages. They're going to the mall. <laughs> That's called the colony, but it, there's also like a there's like an area called the colony that's also a mall. So it's kind of it's oh. a local reference. It really gives some texture to it. I, I, and again, thank you, thank you for sharing that with us. It's, yeah, I you know, I know it feels a really little personal. weird. It feels a little vulnerable to share my poetry mm -hmm. with y'all, but I want to just thank y'all for being so open to me. You know, right. it's like I feel like I don't feel comfortable taking off this suit of armor, you know, that I wear this, this armor. And I feel like, and I don't feel like I took it For off, but I feel like peacocking armor, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I unscrewed one bolt and opened up and was like, look, there's a human in there. It's not just a warrior, a poet, a poet warrior, a warrior poet. <laughs> yeah. <I'm, laughs> that's, 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 that's a good descriptor. Yeah. It's also the kind of thing that's it's just interesting enough to get people to talk to you and then quickly regret it. Like it's just like, oh, what does that mean? And then they start to get the answer and they immediately think, oh shit. I don't know. I've made a lot of friends at the local no. hookah lounge. Other than you guys, the only people I've shared my po my poetry with is people at the <laughs> at the hookah lounge that I hang out. It's called the long pipe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is that, is that what it's called? Yeah, it's in it's in that strip mall over off Burleson Road. <laughs> you know. The long pipe. Well, hey, you know, I thank you for for sharing that poetry. I don't know what this has to do necessarily with Chucky. <laughs> Chucky Chucky and Glenn. Yeah. But anytime that we're able to take a break from this in this this crazy hectic world. And really hear something beautiful like that. I, it it affects me, and then I want to get grounded with some of my own poetry. You have an interesting way of pronouncing what I've always it's, called it's a poem. The, uh, it's the old English way. It's how the <laughs> yeah, it's how the originators of poems said. You know, I mean, you look at the words spelled so P O E M. So uh -huh. that's what like Yeats and Wordsworth <laughs> and uh, some of the greats. <laughs> Um, th th those are some of my heroes. Oh, captain, my captain. <laughs> okay.
when I was getting attacked in junior high, that was like the, yeah. by rich kids. My only retreat was into poetry and poems. That was that was where my brain went. Right. You knew that when you were sitting up on that stoop and your dad was reflecting on his wasted life, your ma couldn't be bothered. Yeah. You were writing your poems. Yep. You you knew that that was going to be your ticket out of there. Yeah, he'd flick cigarettes at me and he'd go, he'd go, why are you wasting your time scribbling in that old, on that old, I, I couldn't even afford paper. So I would, a lot of times I would find a piece of just like a sandstone type rock and I just write, I would just write on the sidewalk. You know, why are you wasting your time? You're wasting the good rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He sounds like a real bastard. I'm. I'm glad you got out of there. Yeah, fortunately, yeah. I, I was eventually. I was. I put some of my poems in a uh, a little glass bottle, and I just I chucked it out into the ocean. I just chucked it, and I said, "By the spirit of of Keats and Yeats." Eight months later, I got a message from from uh, William Yale, and it had made its way all the way to the Ivy League coast. And yeah, and they, you know, and I got a, I got a poetry scholarship and here we are. The rest is history. <laughs> sure. And all this to say that you don't have to be named Amber to have a Amber alert. I think that was, yeah. I think we got to the bottom of that. Yeah. That's good. You could be named, you and could that, be, you could be named Crystal and have an Amber alert, but that's kind of crazy my, though. Right. Amber alert. <laughs> think about it. No, Crystal, I, 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 yeah. but it's an Amber alert. What if it is, is your name's Onyx. And it's an amber alert. Or if your name was uh, Opal, but it's a yeah. amber. If your name was Pyrite. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe Feldspar or Quartz or. No, those aren't good. <laughs> do, do those not work? Don't work. <laughs> those don't work. Only, <laughs> only the ones I said. <laughs> maybe, maybe I didn't It stopped it, and so. started with what I said. <laughs> okay, sure. No, I mean that's all of those would be worthy of perhaps a, a story on a later episode of the INS. We could talk yeah. about. Let's maybe we need to move on to the yeah. next one. Uh, maybe that's you, you sure. You mean, number two. I've got too emotional reading my poetry, and I need to. I need to think about. Uh, I, I think you things. mean your your poetry. poetry. Yeah, no, that's why I said poetry. So our next story comes to us from Vice, and the title is "The Masked Luchador Blue Demon Junior." wants to run for office in Mexico without showing his face. On January 15th, Mexican masked wrestler, also known as a luchador, Blue Demon Jr., announced that he is planning to run for mayor of a Mexico City municipality. Blue Demon Jr. is arguably the most famous person in Mexican wrestling, having appeared in the ring in Mexico in the U.S., starring in films in both Mexico and the U.S., uh, he currently has a development deal with the, with the Disney Channel, and in 2008, he even won the NWA's World Heavyweight Championship belt, which is generally considered the oldest surviving wrestling title in the world. When asked about his qualifications, Blue Demon Jr. said he saw some similarities between fighting in the ring and fighting in government, adding that in both you, quote, have to luchar. I mean, I wrestled growing up. I wrestled growing up, too. Mostly... Calhoun kids. <laughs> yeah, Calhoun, they, they held you down and just crammed money in your mouth. Yeah. And yeah. laughed at you. Yeah. And, the, and told me to stop. That's right. They said, hey, Pansy, stop writing poetry. <laughs> That's right. And I said, it's, it's pronounced poetry. <laughs> through, through the wads of money they just, crammed they, in your yeah, mouth. Yeah, they, they ripped up some of my, you know, I was writing a big canto. Like, it was a long, very long a canto. <laughs> sure. And he just, they tried to shove it down my mouth. And some of it got mm. in there and it did cause some rectal damage on the way out. <laughs> However, Blue Demon Jr. may be ineligible to run for office. One of the big rules of Mexican wrestling is that your, if your mask is removed and your identity is revealed to the public, then you may never wear the mask again. The rule is so strictly followed that Blue Demon Jr.'s father, the original Blue Demon, was even buried in his mask. In order to run for office, Blue Demon Jr. might have to reveal his true identity, but he says removing his mask would be a deal breaker. 
Many political parties have asked for his support over the years, but Blue Demon Jr. always refused until recently when the newly formed Progressive Social Networks Party approached him about running. Two other wrestlers are also running in neighboring municipalities, and Blue Demon Jr. hopes they will all win, stating, Together, we want to bring a better system that works for us so that each municipality replicates the others. They're great to colleagues, and we understand each other very well. Unquote. If elected, Blue Demon Jr. said he will continue wrestling, but only on weekends. This sounds like a... Oh, there's nowhere in the rules that says a dog can't play football. <laughs> oh, shit, it's not in there. Um, right. Well, I mean, I you know, I don't think that he should not be allowed. But is there a rule that says you can't wear a mask if you're a elected well, it's, official? It's, I think it's more like like if you run for office, uh, you know, you know uh, how you're running for mayor of Austin right Show now. Show me the rule. You'd have to you'd have to Show reveal me, your name. The rule. And they'd have to do like if you were a felon, you couldn't run, or if you couldn't, if you were registered to vote, maybe you couldn't run, that kind of thing. So, they, you know, you have to confirm who you are. I mean, in the states, you can wear a mask and be be an elected official. Like uh, Trump had that big fat fucking ugly mask on the whole time. <laughs> that one that made him look like a big fat fucking ugly orange Cheeto. <laughs> <laughs> Batman couldn't run for ba- mayor as Batman. He'd have to run as Bruce Wayne. Yeah, well, that's, but that, that's, that's different. different. I mean, like, that's... Yeah. But there's no rule, and I challenge any wrestler to come fight me for real. Mm-hmm. You you, you, mm-hmm. you, big, you know, muscle, muscled up, oily bohunk. You're out there <laughs> doing your... You're out there in your skin, your skinny tight uh, tights or your tidy whitey purple underwear doing fake choreographed dance moves i'll fight you for real okay like i'm not uh, i am i am if you spend time jumping on and doing fake hits when you try and fight m dub and that's i'll make up I'll, I, I can make up a funny name for myself too m dub well guess what <laughs> I'll just kick you in the balls and I won't I won't fake kick you. I'll real kick you in the balls because you don't you don't come at me yelling at me on camera saying all the things you're going to do to me. And I don't I don't bounce back. I went to fucking Strickland Junior High. <laughs> I, I know how to fight and it's not fake fighting. It's real fighting. OK. And 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 if you if you have a manager that's going to sneak up with a metal chair. Well, guess what? I have a crossbow, okay? I have a small handheld crossbow, and I will shoot that son of a bitch in the leg. And then after I'm done kicking your ass, I'll go take care of him too. What if you had? But what if you had to use your hands? What if that was one of the stipulations of the fight? I mean, it seems to me that if a wrestler in their profession they don't, they're not supposed to use things like chair. Would you be willing to fight a wrestler? Any bare knuckle? Any yes, any wrestler. From the beginning of time till right now. The beginning of time. Yep. <laughs> yes. If there, if there was a caveman that's wrestling quite, league, that's quite a threat. If there was a if there was a like, you know, think about um uh back in like the Bible times. It's uh sure. me, it's just like, Mesopotamian wrestling league. Yeah, I'll take I'll take those squirrely little weirdos on. So if any, if any, if any Egyptian wrestlers, wrestlers are hearing this, they're probably the the snake. You've been challenged. Yeah, <laughs> they come out in their big is. god Horus heads. You know, <laughs> first of all, you fucked up by wearing that mask. <laughs> that is not a good mask for movement. Right, there's your peripheral vision your peripheral, is gone. The peripherals are gone, and maybe you didn't even put eye holes in the neck. You're so stupid and Egyptian. Why don't you take another billion years making a pyramid? Why don't you go? Why don't you go suck some gray alien dick and get another set of pyramids made? What, what a strange <laughs> threat you've you've issued! What a, it is. No, I mean, I I think that there's probably a lot of ancient wrestlers who are very frightened right now. Mike. I mean, they would be if they weren't they're dead. Shaking in their boots, their their souls have been weighed and have probably been placed in doll parts or other things i'll take take it on i'll take it on i'll take on a furby 
the soul of 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 Andre that whatever I don't care I'll take I'll I'll it could be whatever it could, you think Andre the Giant's soul would go into a Furby black magic I is just, not an exact science I'll say that well sure if I know about anything it's about poetry and the occult those are the two right. things well, I know about poems and the and what I want to know is do you have a poem about the black arts and the placing of souls into I you know Furbies. hold on I mean just by chance I have to get out an older mole skin mm-hmm. over here mm-hmm. I'll let you I'll let you dig that out I mean it's, okay this is a side of you that I think everybody's gonna have a lot of fun okay hearing about this is uh okay this one's called be careful with Ouija boards mm. mm-hmm. by Mike Weeby it's a great name a lot of mystery in that name be careful with Ouija boards, lest you may summon demon hordes. Ouija <laughs> boards can be deadly. You don't want to get shot with lead, see? <laughs> for, <laughs> for if you are playing with Ouija boards, you will need a gun. Lest when a demon attacks you, it will not be fun. For they might get into your soul. <laughs> and then, uh, what if the demon does not like rock and roll? You would not be allowed to go to your favorite concert. And when all your friends are going, boy, that would hurt. Because you would be stuck at home all alone. <laughs> And the demon would want to go to a rave where there is foam. Demons have bad taste in music. Any old way you choose it. <laughs> they don't like backbeat that you could possibly lose it. <laughs> Rand Paul 2022. <laughs> so that's that was my poem about the occult. Here's the thing is, I think Rand Paul would have a real chance of doing stuff if he would just go ahead and start wearing a, a mask all the time. <laughs> if he would wear a l- luchador right. mask. Oh, that would be great. He would he would win everybody over. And be, yeah, it was me all What along. would his uh, wrestling name be? The Macho Man yeah. Rand Paul Savage <laughs> is what they... <laughs> what is he running for in 2022? Is what I'm, I'm curious about. Probably Comp Troller. <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd be a good fit for Comptroller. Yeah, in a in you know a mid sized municipality. Well, thank you for yeah once again sharing a little piece of yourself with us this evening. That's a real treat. I like I want to give. Oh, that's part of this podcast is me giving back to the community. Right. You've taken so much from so many that <laughs> <laughs> that this is a great opportunity. I mean, this is a great opportunity for you to give back. I mean, yeah, you're right. I yeah, I've taken, but oh, yeah. No, I mean, you've, <laughs> but yeah, you've, you've really, you've taken a lot. I think it's I, fair what, to say. I, I mean, <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm agreeing. With, I'm agreeing with you. This is your chance to give, give back. Yeah, I'm giving after taking so much. But again, that in part, like I don't know. I thought it was just maybe an altruistic to give. No, I mean, I didn't. I didn't, yes, I didn't no, feel you, like I was look, like. I didn't feel like the world was owed something from me. I just wanted to give. No, yeah, you're 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 balancing the scales a little bit. Like there were maybe a little. Yeah, but I'm wondering. Okay, yes, but how? What exactly was tipped? No, I mean it was. Yeah, what, what it, it was the tipped. weight that I gave to it that I needed to balance out in in your N Y O in your opinion. They, they were they were just I'm just saying they were tipped towards you a little bit. And so it was good that you took some time to try to to try to give get back. To well, I guess I was out. blessed with a, a better bod than a lot of people. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I was specifically referencing your hot bod. That's, yeah. Well, no, that's you're exactly right. I, that I get that. Right. Cheekbones, right. your bod. Innate crossbow skills. Yeah, crossbow, that's- aim. Yeah, and honestly, as much as you're sharing your poetry and giving back, I feel like you're like a you're like a second shill Silverstein. Yeah, I guess. yeah, I'm like a Rose Scholar. So anyway, uh, just like Chris Christopherson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Did you say Rose? Yeah, Scholar. Well, okay, like Bill Clinton I mean, and Chris Christopherson. I mean, I, I think that's something that we would maybe want to check that that's 
that that's the right oh, thing. Oh, that they say. have one too? I'm pretty sure that they have one too. I think sometimes that's referred to by a different name and not just like I don't I don't want to it's not I don't think it's a rose. Like a flower rose, is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah. A rose? Oh, okay, yeah. Um and and look, I understand that you went you went to a, a school in your own words that maybe didn't provide the greatest education. Well that was in junior high, but then I got accepted into Yale. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot that you threw the. I forgot that you auditioned with your poem. Yeah, and then I and got it into went Yale. Around, and John John Yale found yeah. it. Yeah, and brought you to the Ivy School. Yeah, the Ivy, the Ivy or the Ivy League yeah. Coast. Yeah, that's that's how. The, but you you do understand. I was a Rose Scholar because I went to an Ivy League school. <laughs> that's how that works. I know. Uh, I know you don't deal in. You know. I know you went to a state school. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we got, once again, we've gotten to the bottom of this news story yep. <laughs> via the magic of poetry. Yep. Through a straight line, we finished out. Uh, we got to yep. the end of this story. All the way. So, is that is there another story for yeah, us? Yeah, there's one more. Are you, are you ready? Okay, okay, let's hear it. Naples man calls 911 about McDonald's order and says he has cocaine, quote, in his butt. A man in Collier County, Florida, was mm. recently arrested after calling 911 three times to report that McDonald's had gotten his burger wrong twice. When police arrived on the scene, they saw the man in a verbal altercation with staff. The man refused to leave, so police put him under arrest and found marijuana in a folded napkin inside the man's jacket. After being loaded into the police car, the man then exclaimed, I have cocaine in my butt! How was that? Was that all right? <laughs> That was okay. the keeper. I know the right. keeper. That was good, but we, okay. let's get one back up just in case. I have cocaine in my butt. So that's that was a little yeah. more surprised well, than I know. expected. But sometimes you just you know maybe found he found it back there and it was oh wow what is this? The man was taken to Naples Community Hospital to be tested for COVID before being taken to jail. He is facing charges for mm -hmm. trespass, marijuana possession of not more than twenty grams, and resisting law enforcement without violence. The charges, however, do not mention cocaine, whether or not it was in the man's butt or anywhere else. Well, this is this isn't this is McDonald's. This isn't Burger King. You can't have it your way. I'm, that sounds like something that your mother told you several times before she talked to you about cocaine at Strickland Junior High. Of, <laughs> yeah, well, this isn't this isn't Burger King, Michael. You can't have it your way. You can't have it your way. And then she flicked another cigarette at me. And then she lit a cigarette. Said, I gave it to my dad, and he flicked it at me because he mm -hmm. had better aim than she does. That's right. They called it. They called it burn the disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing lit cigarettes at you, just laughing. But I learned to knock them out of the way and you take the pain in. Mm -hmm. And I channeled that pain into them. my poetry. Mm -hmm. and I was mm -hmm. like, I'll never work at McDonald's. I will become. I will become a published poet. <laughs> God damn it. Through hard work and dedication, I made it my way all the way up to Yale, and I made myself mm -hmm. a Rose Scholar <laughs> at Yale. And did I did I have moments where I fell into drugs and tried drugs? Sometimes, sure. Did I have a bout of umbrella parachuting cocaine, which is what's called when you <laughs> snort it through your butt? <laughs> it would get you high quicker to, to, if you could snort it through your butt, though. <laughs> We can be honest. First of about all, that, I, think, right? I don't think you can snort. It implies that there is some sort of vacuum force being <laughs> oh, applied to the powder. Oh, Brian, who's not seen the things on the internet that I have. No, sweet, sweet, innocent Brian. <laughs> well, I'm not saying that you can't put it in your. Oh no, your no, no! Butt. I've seen women that have the ability to do all sorts of things with that area. <laughs> Maybe you've heard that Bush song. Breathe in, <laughs> breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Got a machine head, just like the rest. Green to red, machine head. That song's about a woman who snorts coke with her butthole. Haven't you ever heard of um, uh, Stevie Nicks sure, from the Fleetwood sure. Max? That's probably the yeah. thing she's most famous for, was getting coke blown up her rear end. 
Yeah, but she didn't snort it. Oh, she learned ass. to at some point. Was, at first, <laughs> see, that's at first it was getting blown up in there. Then at some point, she just started. She <laughs> she, she cut out the middleman. Yeah, she cut out the middleman. She would just take a straw, insert the uh-huh. straw, and then duck walk over a line of cocaine. Right. Right, but, but you know what? Yeah, that, like they that would, say, that would have to the snort 70s, cocaine in your ass. The seven that would have to happen. I mean, that's why she got all like witchy woman and stuff. You know, <laughs> is that what it was? Rihanna. That was about the wit. That was about the witch that taught her how to butt snort. She <laughs> she would just take. It was like a big. It was a big straw. It was like it was like a red and white striped straw. <laughs> she would insert it, and she'd have a big flowing dress. He so couldn't see what she was doing, but she would just kind of sure. duck walk and do her little witch dance over a big <laughs> line of cocaine. Hands, yeah. And then she'd go, mm-hmm. she'd get to the end, and she'd just look at you and go, smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I think that's a great place to hey, end. That's, that's it. <laughs> Mike, do you want to say anything about your new podcast before we sign off here? Oh, uh, yeah. I've got a new podcast coming out called Zach and Mike Make Three, where we interview uh, musicians and comedians about three things that they're into. And uh, please give it a listen on all the podcast platforms. All right. Well, I think that's another week of the International News Service. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS, the news you need.